Please follow along for a demo of the Univest Bank Treasury Management Online Banking System. Please start by logging in. Next, you'll be prompted for a code. The code is available via mobile token, desktop application, or a physical token. Once you're successfully logged in, you'll start at the dashboard. This dashboard is customizable by user, where you can view your accounts, segregate them by groupings, and also add widgets that are most used in your position. For example, payments pending approval or positive pay exceptions. You can also complete quick transfers and navigate to any of these additional resources here. You can start by viewing account history by clicking on the account number. The default range is today's date, but you can go back in time up to one year of history. You can view your deposit transactions and your deposit slips by clicking on the hyperlink. You can also view previously cleared checks or incoming returns, again, by clicking on the check number. You can also download your transaction history into a variety of formats, including CSV, PDF, and more. The system does speak directly uh, to QuickBooks Desktop as well as QuickBooks Online. Next, navigating into the payment section, you can start by creating transfers among your Univest accounts. You can see that the availability to do one-to-one -one transfers, one-to-many, or many-to-one transfers exist. You can start by typing in the account name, and you can also opt to do uh, recurring transfers or single transfers by using the frequency drop-down. You can choose to transfer today or any date into the future, whatever is your preference. To complete the transfer, you'll first review the transfer and then confirm. In addition to account transfers, you can also create loan payments if that's permitted by your lender. You'll see that you can choose to opt for a regular payment or a principal-only payment. Outside of account transfers, you can create wire transfers. You'll see that we offer US dollar wires for either domestic or international purposes. Creating a wire is very simple. Please notice the required fields are all marked with the red asterisk. So we start by identifying the wire company, then the offset account can be selected. Now you can choose from a list of your existing beneficiaries, or you can create a new beneficiary by entering a beneficiary here. If the beneficiary is saved, then you can see their account information will populate to the right. Next, you'll scan the amount of the wire, identify the frequency and the payment date. You can also include additional information to the beneficiary by noting that in any of the information boxes or the reference to beneficiary boxes below. Dual control is required on this system, so user one can review their entry and confirm. Once that is complete, you'll notice that the system sends this to pending approval status where a second user can verify and release the wire payment. Wire approvals can happen from a couple locations. First, you can approve them from the dashboard in the payments pending approval section below. So you'll see that wires can be approved here. They can be viewed first by clicking on the transaction ID.
please note the audit trail that's built out will show you which user submitted this and when. As the approver, I can review this information and I could complete the approval or I could reject if modifications are needed. You can also see that anything pending approval, the eligible approvers are listed when you hover your mouse over the pending approval box. So you could directly communicate with any approver necessary. Uh, you could also cancel the wire if necessary. Outside of the dashboard, you can also approve wires from your mobile phone or our mobile application, as well as the wire activity section. Please notice that you can set up wire templates or you can wire specific directly to wire beneficiaries or saved payees in the system. And you can initiate wi multiple wires at once following this route. And you'll follow the same review then approve process. You can also view historical wires in the wire activity section expand the search box and the date range to look at historical wires. When you do this, you can see that the status varies based on your usage, but you can also see that the wires that have been previously po posted are immediately populated with the OMAD or the Fed reference number. You can also view more information by clicking on the transaction ID. And I can see that this wire was scheduled and approved by these users. Aside from wires, you can also create ACH payments. Following a similar format, you'll type in the required fields. choose my company ID, depending on which company should be initiating the wire. You'll choose the effective date of payment and the frequency. Next, choose the offset account. And you can add in your recipients or your payees. So you can choose from your existing recipient list or you can type in your recipients manually here. You can utilize the addenda field to include information like invoice number, you can also process a prenote to validate the account information provided, or you can utilize the hold option to pull this specific recipient from a batch. The same process will be followed where user one reviews and confirms the batch. And once the batch is confirmed, it will be set into a pending approval status where a second user has the ability to approve. Approvals follow similar methods. They can be located on the dashboard under payments pending approval here. You can also locate those under the ACH payment activity or they could be approved from your mobile application. You can set up recurring ACH payments for repetitive batches. For a recurring payment, you'll be able to choose the payment frequency once the required fields are completed. For example, you could schedule your monthly 
rent to come out automatically starting on June 1st. You can schedule an end date or you can have this as an open event. Again, you'll add your recipients. by selecting from your recipient list if you have some recipients created already. Or you could always add a, a recipient by keying in their information this way. Once again, you can create ACH templates or you can create ACH recipients or payees who will be saved in the system. The next Treasury Management Service available is Positive Pay. So when we look at Positive Pay, there's a couple ways to check for exceptions. So check exceptions can be located under this tab. You can first start by viewing the check image itself to confirm if this is an authentic check. And then you choose to pay or return those checks. and save your decision. You see that my decision was saved successfully. You can also view decisions or make positive pay decisions from your dashboard in the positive pay section. So check exceptions can be viewed here. You can also make those decisions from your mobile application. ACH exceptions would be located under the ACH exceptions tab on your dashboard or on the positive pay tab. For all previously worked exceptions for ACH and check, you do have the ability to go back and view historical items. So if there's a question of something cleared your account, you can modify the date range and view previous exceptions this way. To view the decision activity or previously decision items, you can utilize that tab. And you can see these, these payments and what decision was made. You can also see which user made these decisions. The same is available for your check items. So if you wanted to search previous check exceptions, you can do that under your decision history and ex then extend the date range. Once again, we can see the decision that was made to pay or return those items. And by viewing the details, we can also see which user made those decisions. To upload your checks, you can go under your Create Issued Items. And you can choose to upload a file which can be directly exported from your accounting system. I can review my uploads and confirm. You can also manually enter checks by typing in their information.
If you have any doubt whether or not something's been previously uploaded, you can review your issued items. So here's the example of the check that I just issued today, but I can also extend the date range to see what other items were previously uploaded. You can see which user uploaded that check as well. You can use Treasury Management to place stop payments as well as utilize online bill pay. And the final feature is the reporting where you have the ability to create custom reports by user. So there are some standard reports available, but you can also create custom reports. And as you create custom reports, you may name them and identify the date range to be included in the report, the accounts. You can also choose to identify specific transactions that need to be included in this report. Then when you run the report, you can choose to download it into a PDF or a CSV spreadsheet. The system is self-administered, so you have the ability to create users by typing in the information. You can customize user authorities. Uh, making someone a super user would enable them for all accounts and all authorities. An admin has the ability to add and remove other users. Once you create their user profile, you'll provide to them their, the company login information and the system will send them an email to create their own password. You can also choose to reset a locked user or reset their password if necessary. Of course, you can edit and delete a user on real time as well. In addition to the administration section, each user has the ability to uh, set up notifications. So system notifications can prov be provided by email, by desktop notification, which are located up here, or by text message. So there's a variety of notifications that can be turned on by user. For example, an ACH payment approver could choose to receive an email and a text message when a payment is pending approval. Additionally, the ACH cutoff time is 4.30 p.m. So I could choose to receive a notification if a payment is pending approval and the cutoff time is approaching. So again, I can choose to receive an email or a text notification whatever my user preference is. We mentioned the ACH cutoff time. These are also listed available up here. Your ACH cutoff times, exceptions must be reviewed by 1 p.m. daily. You can make transfers till 8 p.m. and wire transfers until 4.30. You can also utilize the message center to send secure messages to the electronic banking team um, in regards to your service, uh, users, etc. So that includes the primary features um, and services available on the Treasury Management site. Please let us know if you have any additional questions. Thank you.